So my postgraduate research and development focuses entirely on interaction design for VR, uh, more specifically user interface design for ergonomic applications of multitasking and productivity. So one way to look at this is what will your operating system in VR look like? I mean, after it's settled down a bit. So after a technology emerges in this consumer market, in my opinion, it tends to take about 15 years for it to really get good, where innovation and competition have given it good features, it's simple enough for late adopters to understand, and the nuisances and kinks and things that weren't expected are worked out. So I'm thinking of things like the PC, cell phones, and the internet. And that may be sped up by now with the information age, it's just a way to establish a paradigm. So if instead of going to work and sitting in front of your screen, you were to put on a head-mounted display and start working, and supposing people have been doing this for a decade or so. So then what would you see and how would you interact with it? So user interface, experience design, product design, all that sort of stuff. I developed it myself. Yes, Siri, this is my ticket upstairs. You know, for kids. At risk of similarity to the Hudsucker proxy, I think the straw may be the world's best invention. Because as far as I know, no one has ever told someone else how to use a straw. It's simple, it's cheap, and more importantly to me, it requires no training whatsoever. It relies on a skill that's inherent in our biology because we instinctively do it as infants. Babies that didn't know how to suck at birth would have died, and that's why I suck, and you suck. So when we make products, the easiest ones to use are the ones that just seem so natural. And we use that word natural appropriately here because it's literally part of your human nature to try to do some things a certain way. And it usually has an evolutionary reason. For example, uh, graphic design uses it to draw your attention. We're really good at pattern recognition and your brain sees it so quickly when everything's similar and one thing's different, or when everything's different and one thing's the same. It just jumps out at you and you can't help it. So we use this with graphic design, object properties like color, keeping things in a palette, but drawing attention with contrast or size contrast. It especially works with motion. Having your attention drawn to something moving was necessary for survival, whether you were hunting something or needing to survive being hunted yourself. Motion design and motion graphics are my personal favorite, but interaction design has the additional challenge of getting someone to interact with that content. Again, you try to do this with as little training as possible. Some inventions in the last few decades would be things like drag and drop, the blue hyperlink, the iPod click wheel, or pinch to zoom. You can see how it's not necessarily the technology itself, the mouse, the internet, the iPod, and multi-touch, but it's inventing ways for people to use the technology in a simple and understandable way. So, We'll be using things that our people are familiar with, but we can add new ones with VR. What we add, we want it to be so intuitive that people will be able to guess how to use it and be right. We want it to be as... Uh, as compulsory as you yawning after someone else yawns. There's some new things to try out here that may or may not work. For example, you can now draw attention to the side with contrast and motion cues. In addition, we'll be able to use holophonic sounds to get someone to look in a direction, uh, like when you hear an aircraft and look up. I want to try some of these things out and look at how you're compelled to look when other people are pointing at something. Also, if there's some kind of viewport like binoculars or a hole in a fence, you want to look through it. Uh, we may be able to do things that inspire caution, like a shadow passing on the ground. Uh, the idea there being that big eagles used to carry off little kids, and that's why you duck with now when a shadow flies over. But uh, I'd also be interested in looking at what kinds of effects day and night cycles or weather cues have on a user interaction. That and having interface elements inspired by interpersonal communication cues like folded arms or eye contact. So this is starting to sound more intriguing, but you're probably wondering what my use case is for these things. Uh, the way that I usually explain it to people is that Right now, depending on your job, you may go sit in front of your computer and look at a screen. It's a rectangle screen with rectangle windows. Cool, she's got a bigger screen. Cool, he's got two monitors. Now, if instead you were to go to work and put on a VR headset or head-mounted display, HMD, now it doesn't look like a screen in front of you. It's everything around you. So if you are working in Photoshop before, you can make your Photoshop window the size of a billboard. And uh, maybe your windows don't have to be rectangular. 
I mean, we've been using rectangles because they make sense on a flat rectangle screen, but maybe something else will be better in VR. So instead of websites being flat pages, uh, they'll have entire web environments like the VR web people are working on. Um, it'll really be the difference between a web page and a website. So some people who were web designers before will need to learn to be environment designers and really will have to find out a lot about what architects and interior designers have already learned. It does bring up some other uh, unique challenges to solve, like if you're going from website to website, um, you don't have your URL bar at the top necessarily, so how do you glance and see where you are? So I was moving ahead with my concept as the watch check gesture, and it seems that Leap Motion has had the same idea of using an on-arm uh, HUD, but I was thinking that maybe your left arm pulls up a URL bar, back and next, and uh, you could access the menu there, and maybe your right arm has more background processes, like widgets and an app launch pad, like left is application specific and right is operating system. Uh, maybe when a text field is selected, the bottom of the screen could fade to see your keyboard. A keyboard right now is a bit of a crutch though. We'll have to test out other things like voice commands or virtual keyboards more too. We should also try other inputs like the uh, Palm Pilot throwback, like using your uh, finger in the air to write letters. Besides that, right now people set their desktop wallpaper and they usually do some common ones like nature photography, family photos, the classic uh, deserted island beach. In VR, your desktop background would be all around you. Some VR apps are already doing this. You would see the island beach and the ocean as the backdrop for your application, or maybe a museum where all the portraits on the walls are your family photos. I'll list a lot more of these later, but essentially it means whatever your background is, this is your new office space, and as such, maybe it should be represented as a corner office or a nice house. So depending on how skeuomorphic we want to get, you could look at a clock on the wall to check the time or uh, have your application icons on the shelf. I don't know if you'd want to go so far as to have a literal mailbox in the room, though that does bring up the fact that there would need to be backwards compatibility for 2D content. So you'll still need to have screens to view documents and non-VR websites and programs. So by now, a lot of people watching will notice that what I'm describing is essentially the design of a new operating system. So not necessarily a game or a single application, though programs would definitely be using the same ideas, especially with menu systems. But what I'm talking about is using VR as your primary interface for using your computer, replacing your monitor with a head-mounted display. So what I'm looking at is how will people use VR for productivity and multitasking. That's things like browsing the internet, switching applications, getting notifications, managing files. And so, so, so much of this depends on the input method. I originally wrote this manifesto when it was more unsure, but Oculus' recent acquisition of their computer vision team tells me that they're pretty clearly going for inside-out tracking with free hands in space. So I'm going to be doing my design and prototyping with that assumption. That's just me, and I should recognize that all this stuff, I bring my own opinions, bias, and assumptions and they may not be right. In fact, I would hope that they would continue to change with new news. My bias is that I favor technological advancement in general. I think I hear a lot of people say uh, technology is ruining the world, and I think people have always thought that VR particularly will have a negative stigma associated with it socially. Porn, solitude, escapism, like these will be some of the concepts that are the uh, sensationalist news headlines over the next decade. And I'm not saying those are bad things, I just want to point out that adoption by consumers will be slower if the product is viewed negatively, but that's a whole different discussion altogether. Uh, as far as assumptions, I assume that it'll be a relatively large industry. Realistically, best practices will rise to the top with or without me, but I'd still like to help get it there as fast as possible. Just in the last month, I've seen several demos pop up for managing Windows and interfaces with hands, so I'm clearly not the only one working on it. And I'd love to network with other people and exchange ideas, too. Uh, I imagine that the reason I'm doing any of this is similar to the rest of the VR community. We do it because we think it'll change the world and we want to be there. We do it because education can be more engaging, training can be more effective. We do it because the building is better designed if you can walk through it before you build it. We do it because you should be able to visit a museum no matter what country you're in. We do it because the internet doesn't have to be 2D anymore. We do it because we want to relax, we want to experience stories, we want to tell stories. 
We do it because we can have a corner office. You can have the Oval Office. Your workspace can be an evil villain's lair, a SpaceX cockpit, the NASA control room, a desk in the Alps, the Golden Gate Bridge, a nebula, your own spaceship, your luxury vehicle garage, a coral reef, a Zen garden, a library study, a Renaissance mansion, uh, Columbia, Hyrule, the Batcave, Cerebro, the Nebuchadnezzar, Wonderland, an ice castle, the Fortress of Solitude, the Enterprise, Tron, the Iron Throne, Dumbledore's office, Sauron's tower, the Death Star, the Jurassic Park you control room. The magic word. Your office can be a brush painting, uh, Starry Night, Escher, Dolly, or just abstract something, anything. We do it because we can create worlds and stories for other people to explore and explore the worlds and stories that other people have created. And you might say that by understanding everyone else's universe is a little better, we learn a little more about our own.